Hello everybody, what's going on? Welcome on into another day of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. With me, your host, Sam Peterson. Uh, we're going to be doing these challenges for the next two weeks together. We're going to be doing them this week, next week, and then we're going to have two weeks of replays. So it's nine challenges, uh, Monday through Friday for these two weeks, and then two weeks of replays of those same challenges. Uh, hello everyone, good to see you. I see uh, Wade in the chat, General Kenobi. Gareth, Sean, Susan, uh, both Susans, hello Susan, um, Charles, Stoney, Clarissa, cartoon yourself, or cat-toon yourself, you could, if you guys want to do a cat version, actually, it's funny that you say that, I think you're uh, predicting things to come a little bit, uh, welcome on in everyone, good to see you, so let me show you how to join these challenges before we jump into them, shall we, if you go to this landing page here at behance.net, slash challenge slash photoshop you'll see this you'll see the big blue button here at the top that's how you can register for these challenges get notifications when we're uh when we're revealing new ones and all of them are revealed down here so yesterday we did the perspective match talked a little bit about perspective and scenes uh and today we're doing cartoon yourself so i don't know if anyone remembers some trend that was happening on bad with time a year ago two years ago who knows but it was some sort of like let me know if you guys know the name of it. It was something like Cartoon Yourself or Tunify Yourself or something like that where people would do um, a painting of them in their style and then the other half would be a photo of them. So we're kind of doing something like that today. Um, if you do want to join these challenges, I do want to tell you about the community Discord that you can join. Uh, definitely check that out. It's the Photoshop community Discord where you can post any designs that you've been working on for these challenges. There's sections like Design Other where you can post other challenges. Um, sorry, other designs that aren't related to the challenges. There's ones for past challenges. Uh, but any of the challenges that we're doing now for the next two weeks, you can all post those in the challenge section here for the next like month because we'll be doing the replays as well. Uh, there's a question section here. Actually, let me move my, my big old head. Um, there's Ask a Question section over here. But these are all the different channels on the left, and you'll... You'll be able to find everything you need through that. So with that said, I think uh, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Hey, what's up, Betty? Uh, Bruce, I think I got you. Odari. Um, anyone else I missed? Tim. Tim Loomis. Um, yeah, well, come on in, everyone. Good to see you. So let's jump into Photoshop. The time has come. Let's see here. Pop that up. There we go. All right, so I'm going to move myself over here so I'm not in the way of the layers panel. I remembered this time. Um, Derva, hello, hello. Jay, what's going on? Good to see you. All right, so we're going to do this cartoon effect where we make half of the photo cartoon, half of the photo photo. <laughs> so this is me with one of my kitties. Uh, this is Eminem. Um, Mercurial may, may recognize. I think some of you may recognize uh, this cat. I know Wade has seen him. Um, we're going to turn this into like a cartoon image and then merge it with the photo image. So let's get started with that. First off, I've noticed that this effect works better when it's small. So having a really high resolution file, um, I, I feel like you'll find out why it doesn't work so much, but I feel like there's too much detail and the filters that we're going to apply latch onto that. So I'm actually going to convert this to a thousand pixels tall. So pretty small. We're going to shrink it down here. Uh, but I think this effect works a little bit better when we do that. So first off, make sure it's small. Um, I'm going to separate the subject from the background next. So I'm going to create a backup image. Um, you see we have our background image here. I'm going to double click it to just turn it into a normal layer so I can modify it. But I'm going to do C Control or Command J to duplicate it. And the one at the bottom, I'm just going to type backup. That'll just be our backup that we have. Uh, Commander Control Shift N to create a new layer, and this is going to be our new, our new um, background. I'm just going to put white for now. That way, I can I can kind of see this a little bit easier. So let's separate the subject from the background. We have our original photo backed up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select my Quick Selection tool here. Um, the hotkey for that is W, and uh, you'll see the Select Subject button here at the top. I'm going to click that, and that usually does a pretty good job. Um, this is kind of all like AI driven, but you can always manually mask it more if you go to select and mask the button next to it. We can then go in and refine it. There's different 
kind of viewing modes here just to separate it from the background to get a good uh, good view. But actually, I think this did a pretty good job. And for our purposes, we do not need a really refined selection with like soft edges for hair and all that stuff. So I'm just going to click OK. I like it. From here, I'm going to click the mask button right here at the bottom next to the FX button. And that will cut it out for us. And that looks pretty good to me. Um, I do notice this bit on the hair I don't really care for. So I'm going to just take black with my brush tool, which is B for brush. And I'm just going to paint over that. Um, again, I'm not looking to be super precise here, but that was bugging me. So that's easy to mask out. Remember, black conceals, white reveals um, on the mask layer here, the little black and white icon. Make sure you're selecting that when you're masking. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, what do I want to do from here? I'm going to create, I'm going to make this layer that we just masked out. I want to make it a smart object. So I'm going to right click the layer, convert to smart object, and then I'm going to do control or command J to duplicate it. Now, the one on the bottom I'm going to name color, and the one on the top I'm going to name lines. So if you can see what we're doing here, for this cartoon effect, I'm going to create a line layer for like a convincing kind of like hand-drawn or inked uh, lines. And that's going to be the top, and then the bottom one will be the colors. So it's kind of, if you think like comic books, you have the inking and then you have the coloring. That's kind of what we're separating it here. Cat looks like he's saying what is Sam looking at. Do you guys know how many pictures I had to take to get one that looked good? We were just like rapid firing these pictures with each cat and this was the best one with him and him. You can kind of see the slight paw like, hmm, I might, I might jump off thinking about it. All right. Um, from here, let's go ahead and work on the lines first. <clears throat> so for the lines, I'm going to do filter at the top here, filter gallery, and then we're going to do poster edges. So if you click poster edges here, you'll see these effects. Um, for me, I think I found that 0, 1, and 6 work the best, but this is going to differ by your image, so play around. Um, the issue I have with higher res images is all these little black dots become more and more pronounced. So you can kind of see if you do edge intensity up, um, it makes those bolder, which I don't really want. <clears throat> uh, edge thickness doesn't actually affect too much. It kind of gets rid of some of those thinner ones. But I think uh, 0, 1, and 6 will work pretty well. Posterization is kind of the color behind it, but I'm going to leave that at 6 because we'll have another effect for that. We're just worried about the lines right now. Um, from here to kind of refine some of those dots, I'm actually going to go to, let's see, uh, I want to go to Image, Adjustments, and Threshold, and that's going to have a good amount of control over that. Black conceals white reveals. Yeah, I, I did not make that up. I think I got that from Jesus. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely helps me remember it too. So as you see, if you adjust the threshold, um, you'll kind of adjust how much of those, those black marks are showing. I think somewhere around like 60 looks pretty good. And you're going to see that it turns it black and white completely, which is exactly what we want. <clears throat> um, from here, we still have this kind of ugly pixelated look. I find that the oil paint filter smooths that out pretty nicely. So we're going to go to filter, stylize, and oil paint. And you can see here, um, it softens it up. It's a bit too much. That stylization, I think I want to turn that down to something like one. Whoops, I didn't mean to confirm that. We'll go back, stylize, and oil paint. So one, three, um, point one, and zero look pretty good. Yeah, I think, I think I like that. I think we'll keep that. It gives it a smoother look without being uh, too crazy. So right now we kind of got this, you know, kind of convincing hand-drawn or, or inked stylized graphic look, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think we could push that a little bit further. We still have some little artifacts that I'd like to get rid of. The threshold did a really good job, but let's create a levels adjustment layer. One of my favorite layer types. And I'm going to right-click that and do create clipping mask. It's going to clip it to our line layer. And I'm just going to, yeah, see how it starts to get rid of um, the dark bits when I take the rightmost slider and I pump up the lights. So I think somewhere around 200 uh, might be pretty good for that. Yeah, it looks good to me. Let's keep that. I like it. <clears throat> uh, lastly, I'm going to change this mode to multiply. Oh, whoops, not the, I keep, I do this 
a lot. I clicked the wrong layer, so that's the levels adjustment. I'm going to do Control or Command Z, and I'm select my lines and put that to multiply. There we go. So now we have this little uh, little effect over our our color, but the colors don't look cartoony, right? They don't have that same effect. So now we need to work on the color layer down here. So for the color layer, um, I think I want to do a surface blur just to smooth out the the um, details a bit. So if I go to Filter, Blur, Surface Blur, it'll take me into this, and you'll be able to see the effects. Um, I find Threshold has the most dramatic effect. You can see how it looks in the preview. I was just blurring it to oblivion. Uh, but you can actually get pretty blurred um, with the line over it. The line really solidifies it. But I found that for me, 20 radius and 10 threshold works pretty well. Uh, we're going to apply different effects, so this isn't going to be solely responsible for the cartoony color. So I think 20 and 10 uh, looks pretty good. You can see that happening on the main image. It's a subtle effect, but it's nice. And then from there, um, I'm actually going to do oil paint again. So we're going to go to stylize. Uh, sorry, filter stylize oil paint. And for this one, I might take this stylization to 2. Um, and I think I'll leave the other settings the same. 2, 3.0, 0 0.1, and then 0, 0.0. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. And now we're, we're already kind of getting a pretty a pretty nice stylized effect, I think. Oil paint is just good for like softening things, I find, a lot. There's a lot of options you can play with, um, but I like that uh, effect that it has. Um, so from here, I think we'll apply one more filter. We're doing a lot of filters. I'm going to go to Filter, Filter Gallery once again, and once again under the Artistic tab, we will do um, Filter Cutout. There's Cutout. I knew we had it somewhere. So the number of levels is going to drastically affect this look, right? And this is going to differ by picture. Um, I'm kind of going for what, you know, the colors, like those colors are very weird. But graphically, it simplifies your image. So I actually found that 8 and 6 look the best for this particular image. Uh, but I think 8 I like. Edge simplicity is really neat because it kind of simplifies the graphic shape. So you can actually get some really cool stylized effects here. But I think I like 2. So 8, 2, 2 look pretty good for this image. Now we kind of got this stylized effect. So if I take off the lines, you can kind of see what that looks like. It's not bad. We're getting there. <clears throat> Sam could use a neck ruffle. Man, if you know if you know where to get one, you need to buy one up. Hey, RB, good to see you. Welcome on in to anyone who's just uh, popped in recently. All right, so where are we at? Um, I think uh, I think the colors don't look quite how I want them to. They're, they're very desaturated, and I'm not quite feeling that. So let's go to layer. New adjustment layer. A lot of adjustment layers too. Hue and saturation. We're just kind of gradually applying more and more effects until we we fine tune it to get what we want. So for hue and saturation, I just want to pump up the um, saturation a little bit. Maybe like, yeah, that's not bad, like 14, 15, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, but it's a little orange for me, so I might tweak the hue. If I go uh, left, which is the negative numbers, it goes more red. Um, positive is more yellow, so I think I want it just a little bit more red. Maybe like two. Maybe something like that, but it's still not quite right. Uh, I like the saturation, it's better, but we need a levels adjustment. It's too dark, it's not cartoony enough. So let's do a levels adjustment, and then we'll tackle the background, because the background's not quite working for me. It's hard to gauge how this looks with just a stark white background. So let's do a little bit of boost for the levels. I'm taking the rightmost slider, blowing it up. Um, maybe, maybe like 200. It's pretty good. We can always adjust these after we do the background. It's hard for me to gauge, but I like that brighter and more saturated look. That doesn't look quite cartoony to me. This this looks a lot more cartoony. So let's get that background. Um, I have the background layer here. Actually, didn't name it. I encourage you all to name your layers. I think it's a good habit. 
Um, and I'm going to press G for the paint bucket tool right over here. And you can try different colors. Uh, that's that's not a pleasant color. <laughs> um, yeah, something like that. Maybe a little bit brighter. Uh, you can get some cartoony, you know, nice bold colors. You can really do whatever you want. Ooh, that's intense. Uh, but let's try a gradient. I think a gradient might be nice. Oh, you guys probably can't hear it because of my filter, but if you heard a cat in the background, that's actually this cat. He's He's got woes. Um, if you're not familiar with the gradient tool, uh, you can go down here, you can click the little, little gradient bar up the top left, and you'll have a lot of default ones here. But uh, if you want to create your own, you just click this little square, and then you can click the color box here, and you can change the color to whatever you want. You can also add in more colors by clicking right below the bar. You'll see that hand icon pop up, and you can slide that around. You can make that whatever um, whatever gradient you, you want. You can also grab it and drag it away to get rid of it. But I like this gradient. I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to go from top to bottom. There we go. That's not too bad. Let's zoom out. Something like that looks kind of nice. I like that. All right. The goatee is included, yeah. You gotta have the goatee if you got the ruffles, that's for sure. Um, all right, so where are we? I think this is pretty good. Did I miss anything? Hmm. No, I think I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to organize my layers further. This just works better for my brain. Um, I'm gonna select all the layers for both the color and the line effect that we just did. Not a lot of them, but those ones we just worked on. I'm going to press Control or Command G to group it. And I'm just going to name this Lines and Color. Helps me organize it a little bit better. I don't want that to be green. It's color color coded. Um, no color. And um, next what I want to do is C Control or Command Alt Shift E, which basically makes a completely merged version of what we just created. So that's all on one layer now, that cartoon effect. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate our backup layer. I knew I need that. So the original photo, I'm gonna do Cont Controller Command J. I'm gonna bring that up. So that's the original photo. And I'm gonna name this um, just photo. All right. So what we wanna do here is we have our cartoon uh, and I wanna merge it with the photo so it's kind of doing that trend that I saw on Instagram some time back where it's like you know cartoonify yourself and it merges it with the realistic photo so how do we do that you might have guessed it we're gonna mask it also if anyone has any questions let me know as we're going I'm trying to glance at chat here and there hopefully I'm not missing anything um oh did someone say the kitty with the ruffle that would be perfect if we had matching collar ruffles Oof, he has a better ideas than I do all right, so I'm going to use the last, uh, the polygonal lasso, polygonal, polygonal lasso tool. Um, it's right here. It's under the lasso tool. You can, uh, if your lasso tool is usually selected, you can actually do um, control or sorry, shift L and cycle through them. It's a little hotkey tip if you're cycling through the same tool category repeatedly. I'm going to click outside the canvas and I'm just going to create like this lightning bolt effect. Um, kind of going through my face in an interesting way so we can see a cool part of the cartoon, but we can also see a, a little bit of the photo. I wanna mostly highlight the cartoon. So I'm gonna select most of the face there. Um, I think that's good. A good selection of my face will be kind of the cartoonified look. And then I, I wanna get, maybe like split it on the eye there for, for M&M, for my kitty. And then, uh, yeah, maybe like right there would look cool. And then a little bit of his feet. Let's see a little bit of his feet. And then I'm just going to connect this outside. So now we have our selection. I can go ahead and mask that. So we currently have our cartoon selected. I could even name this cartoon. So we got our cartoon on a photo. And I'm going to click the little mask button here at the bottom next to the FX button. Bam. So now we got this little like merging of worlds. But... Can you show us Eminem? I can't right now. Um, if you guys come into my private, well, my private streams, that sounds very exclusive. Uh, if you come into my Behance streams sometime on my own channel, let me know. I'll, I'll show you show you Eminem. We also have a couple foster kitties right now. We got Tumbleweed and Sesame, and uh, they're pretty cute. 
So it's a, it's a cat packed house currently. All right, so this is cool, but it's missing a little something. Um, I think we can add a little like glowing line across to, to separate them a little bit more. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I think pen tool will be good for this. Pen tool is right here above the text tool, P for the shortcut. And I'm just gonna click, no click and drag, just click right on the points. It's gonna be a hard edge line. Boom. And you know what? I just realized I can't see where that other point is. So something we could do is just make this a different color. Let's switch to the paint bucket tool. There, I just made a layer underneath the cartoon layer so it's not blending in with the darkness. Um, so I'm gonna delete that shape I just made. We'll select our pen tool again. Same thing, just click on those points. But now we can clearly see the seam much more easily. There, uh, line is too thick for me. Right here at the top, you'll see this little pixel slider next to the stroke. I'm gonna make it smaller. <clears throat> Maybe something like six, five? I don't wanna cover up too much of the portrait, so I think five might be good. There, now we can get rid of this little um, purple backing that was just temporary. I'm gonna delete that, I don't need it. And for this shape, we'll put borderline, because I like to name my layers. I'm gonna double click that to get into layer styles, and I'm going to do an outer glow. Um, my settings are just like 63%, spread is zero, size is five. You can play around with that, but I don't want it too intense. I kind of like what I had. So I'm gonna leave that, just a little bit of a glow, give it a little bit of pop. And then, uh, yeah, it's not too shabby. So we're, we're kind of getting near the end of this. Um, one thing that I didn't like that the filters didn't do for me perfectly, and you're gonna find this a lot, filters, and a lot of the tools within Photoshop get a lot of the work done, but sometimes you have to make those manual tweaks. So what I don't like is how only parts of the face are outlined. I think we could push that a bit more, especially the, the contour of the face, which I think should have the boldest outline. So I'm gonna do uh, lines. I'm gonna just name this added lines. It's just a normal layer. And I'm gonna get my brush tool. I don't want this brush. Um, I want like a hard round brush. I have this inking brush, it's hard round. Uh, with the pen selected, it has like variable sizing, but we don't need that. I'm just gonna make it smaller. You can use the bracket keys uh, quickly to resize it. I'm gonna put the smoothing way up. I usually have my smoothing at 10% on my brush, but let's put it to like 75. Uh, I'm gonna pick black, and this is with a mouse, mind you. Smoothing makes it, makes it possible. Um, I'm gonna just try to make a little bit of like manual lines here. And I can erase it, you know, if I go too far. Uh, this doesn't need to be perfect either. The way the effect is currently done, there's like little bits and pieces kind of randomly missing. And I want to do it on Eminem as well. So I'm just erasing with a hard brush here, you know, that kind of like broken effect I think works for this. Um, for him, I think the broken effect is gonna be even more important because he's got fur. So if you see anyone who's like a experienced inker, like a comic book artist or something, they're not gonna draw fur with a clear unbroken line, right? So kind of mess that up, I'll just erase it. Um, I may break the line up here and there. But just like doing it a little bit here and there kind of mimics the effect we just had. So it doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, it looks more realistic and natural if it's not. But that uh, smoothing really, really helps that, I think. There, now we, we strengthen that a little bit more. So that looks pretty cool. Um, I don't know if we have time, but the last thing I think I would wanna do is probably, let's see, um, is probably select the shadow of my face. I feel like it's too desaturated. I think especially for cartoons, if you select like these shadow bits and make them uh, a bit more, whoops, make them a bit more saturated, it'll have a little bit more of like a happy, vibrant 
cartoony look. So what I would do is select that with the magic wand tool because these are like flat sections of color. I only want it on the cartoon bit. Um, and then what I can do is adjustment layer, hue and saturation. But that's the last thing I can do today because I do got to run. But you can bump up that saturation and change the color. Um, I'll probably mask that out on the hands because it doesn't really look so good. Just choose black and paint over the hands a little bit. But that's pretty much it, everybody. Um, I do have to call it. Just remember that we can post these challenges on the Discord. We have some awesome submissions here, some really cool stuff people are posting. So check it out if you haven't. Awesome job with the robot box uh, perspective challenge, by the way, everyone. Um, with the cover image, I've been seeing some really great ones. So keep it up. And if you want to join the challenges, just head to the landing page. Um, and you can, you can find them all there. Uh, that's going to be the easiest place, especially after all these recordings are done or the live sessions are done to go back and find them. So I do have to run. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing the challenges. I look forward to seeing more. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Bye, everybody.